Hello and welcome to the Mediation Institute Student Orientation. Hello, my name is Ken Speakman and I'm the Director for Applied Learning for Mediation Institute. I'm also the Interact Support Queensland Program Manager. I also have my own mediation business where I'm the founder and principal mediator. Today, we're talking about the orientation with your online learning with our Learning Management System, or LMS for short. This orientation covers all courses by Mediation Institute, with the exception of the Grad Dip FDR. The Grad Dip FDR covers most of what's here, but there are a few specific things regarding it which may be a tad different. But if you're doing the Grad Dip FDR, this is a very good place to start with your orientation. Today, we're going to be talking about the dashboard. That's the LMS dashboard, the menu layout, including the submenus, the modules, which your, your study program consists of, the files section, the marks section, the email for communication between yourself, other students, and also faculty, the role play scheduler, and finally, Q&A on this um, webinar. Starting off with the dashboard, when you log into the learning management system, you'll see a, a, now an output which looks very similar to this. The only difference is the course may be different because you may not be doing the NMAS course. Um, so if you're doing the grad dip, it'll show the grad dip there. If you're doing another course, it'll show you the name of it. You may have more than one, depending on what you're doing. And this is where you select where you're going to dive in and study. On the left here is the main menu, which consists of the account, the dashboard, courses, calendar, and the emails. This is what we refer to as a primary or main menu for the system. When you log in, it automatically goes to the dashboard. The account section, this allows you to change some of the settings of your account, like which emails you'll receive from the system uh, or not receive. It allows you to customize the, the outlook and the look of the feel of the program a little bit. But overall, you mainly don't live in that area at all. You mainly be living in the dashboard and the inbox. Moving forward, we have the menu layout. Once you've logged into the course you're doing, in this case, the NMAS one, the secondary menu pops up. This is the menu for this course. All the menus look and feel the same. The sequence may be a little bit different, but they will all contain things like modules, marks, files, discussions, people, etc. As I said, the order may be different, but they all have the same items in it. One of the main areas you'll be living in while doing the course is the modules. Now the modules is a complete listing of everything you have to do to complete the course. It is a linear layout. In other words, you start at the top and you work your way through it. At the bottom of each page, you'll have a previous and a next button. You can use those to go to the next item in the module. So with this, you just work from top to bottom and work your way through the course. When you go into a page, you'll have things in there like text, which you've, you, know, you learn and read about what you're studying. It may also have some videos in there or external files or links going all over the place. These are for you to look into, view, um, and get a better understanding of where you're at with the mediation process. With the course, as I said, it's top to bottom. So you work your way down the list of all the modules. But if you come across something which you get stuck on, and it's sort of like, you know, oh my God, I've got to get an answer to this. Then what you can do is you can drop Joanne or myself or one of the other uh, mentors an email requesting you know, help with whatever the issue is. And what I suggest then is, is to then go around that and continue with the course while you're waiting for a response. The response should happen within 24 hours. So rather than sit there and waiting for it, just move on to the next bit and continue working. When you get the response, you can just go back and finish off that section and you'll be all okay. Next thing I'd like to cover here are the file section. The file section has some very important files you must um, understand and you'll be using throughout the course. What I mean by that is 
the assessment form, which is this one here, for all your role plays, we have an assessment form which we've got to grade you against. In that directory is the assessment form for this particular course. So you need to download that, print it out, so you can see exactly what we're looking for when we are evaluating one of your role plays as a mediator. On the NMAS course, we also have the mediation and communications book in there. That's about a 173 page book on mediation and communications, a very good read, not a difficult read, but it answers a lot of questions you may have which is not covered in the course, and that's not much, but there's more in it, more depth into it. Next thing is the role play scenarios. You'll need the role play scenarios for when you're doing role plays, like if you're doing NMAS, one of the role plays you may be doing would be workplace one for argument's sake. And that is with Andrew and Alicia. If you're the mediator, there's a mediator sheet there for you to download and read before doing the mediation. And if you're one of the role players, it also has the, the scenario for that particular person. In other words, the Andrew one will look different to the Alicia one. So this gives you the, the background of what you need to be a, a role player in, the, in this particular scenario. With the role plays, um, what you do there is you do not uh, stray too far from the, the scenario. You can add little bits and pieces to personalise it, that's not a problem. But don't add information which is a deal breaking type thing. Like with the workplace one, don't instantly say you've now got an action going through fair work or something because that would totally skew the role play. It's not in your scenario, so don't go down those sorts of roads. Now with the role play as a role player, it's good fun, honestly, it's, it's great. Once you've done one, you wanna do more. And like anything with mediation, the more you do, the better you become. So go for it. The next thing there is a directory called scripts. In the scripts directory for the NMAS, there's two scripts. There's the intake script and also the mediation script. The intake script is there, although you're not doing it, just to give you an idea of how an intake would look if you're actually doing one in real life. But the uh, mediation script, which is uh, in there, is definitely worth downloading and working with. Now that particular script, if you look at it compared to the assessment form, you'll see it ticks off all the points of what you've got to cover, or most of them anyway. I mean, we can't script what's going to be said by the parties in the mediation because that varies from person to person. But overall, how you transition between the, the, the steps of a mediation, what you've got to cover in your opening statements, how you cover confidentiality is all listed in that script. So what I recommend to people is to get the script, print it out, and one day when you've got nothing to do, read it out loud. Now, when you read it out loud, there might be the occasional time where you stumble because the grammar of the script is not your grammar. If that happens, change it to suit your grammar so when you read it out loud, you do not trip over on it. Being an open book um, course, you are allowed to use the scripts right the way through up to and including your assessment. However, it's not a good idea to sit there reading it in your assessment. It doesn't look that professional. And when you get into a real life mediation, having a script is a definite no-no. Next thing is the marks. Now, the reason I, I bring this particular section in, the marks are typically in the same sequence as the modules. Now, with the modules, there is no breadcrumb. So it doesn't tell you where you're up to. So if you do a heap of work into the, the modules and you get to say a halfway through a particular bit, and you go away for a couple of weeks and come back, then the system doesn't tell you where you're up to. It's up to you to figure that out. Now, what a lot of people do is they'll actually get the whole of the modules and copy it all, put it into a Word document, print that out, and they'll cross them off as they do them. So when they come back a week or two later, they can see exactly where they left off. If for whatever reason that's not practical for you to do, then come into the mark section, section you can look at this and you can see at the moment, this particular person, me, 
has done the conflict versus abusive control. I have not done create your own run sheet yet. So therefore, I know I'll be between those two somewhere so I can find it easier than starting in the beginning and trying to work my way through to where I was up to. I hope that makes sense. After the marks, we'll look at the emailing system. And this is off the main menu, the primary menu in the grey there at the bottom. As you can see, it says there's a one there. I've got one unread email. And you can see that sitting there, um, it's addressed to, uh, or from, sorry, Cynthia. Or addressed to Cynthia and me. Addressed to Cynthia and me, sorry. Um, if you click on that, it will then display the whole message so you can read it. If you wish to reply to that message, up in the top here, you'll see there's a quill and there's an arrow pointing backwards and an arrow with two heads on it pointing backwards and a download button, a delete button, and a settings button. To reply, just hit this arrow button here, the first one, and it will then open up a window and allow you to reply directly to the person who sent it. If you go to the reply with the two arrowheads, it replies to everyone on the distribution list of that email. If you wish to create a new email, you hit the quill, this one here, and it'll open up a window so you can um, compose your email. It's pretty clever because you select the course you're doing, then on the two bar, you can actually click over here on the little, little picture of a, like a postage stamp, and that gives you a choice of teachers, students, course sec, uh, sections and student groups. If you want to talk to an individual teacher or student, just click on that and the, all the names will appear. You can then select that person and then do the subject, then do your message and then send, hit the send button. So all the names are there, you don't have to worry about remembering. As long as you remember the person's name, you can send it to that person. The role play scheduler is where you'll start looking at um, doing the practical side of the course. Now there's a link to the role play scheduler under the role play scheduler uh, on the modules menu. I might actually whiz back if I can real quick. No, it doesn't, there it is there, role play scheduler. You click this link here for role play scheduler, it'll open up a page and on that page will be the link to the role play scheduler. When you do, it's a Google Doc, which is on a, a Google Drive sitting on the wonderful internet. And when you click on it, the spreadsheet appears. What you will see on the spreadsheet is it has the day, the date, the time in Queensland time, Eastern Standard Time, which is, you know, the rest is Melbourne, Sydney, what have you, South Australia Time and Western Australia Time, who the mentor is for this role play and their Zoom meeting ID. But then your student puts in which role play it is for them. In this case, it is the role play two, the second time they've been a mediator and they're choosing workplace two as a scenario. Past this are the boxes you, they put their name in as a mediator, or if they're not a mediator, put their name down as a role player. Remember before I said the more role plays you do, the, the better you become? That's so true. So put your name down at all available ones you can, based around your own individual lifestyle, work commitments, home commitments, etc. The more you do, the better you become. There's some color coding here, like the yellow, there are things like webinar, webinar sorry. Um, these two here, one's done in the morning at 12 at, um, by Joanne, the other one's at 7 p.m. by myself. And these are understanding facilitative and transformative mediations. These happen like once a week, once a month, whatever. This one down here is practice, practice development mastermind group. Once again, hosted by Joanne between 11 and 12 and myself between seven and eight. And once again, there's our Zoom ID, so you can find it really easy to join. If it's got green through it, that means that role play actually occurred and was completed. If it's got a purple line through it or purple background to it, that means that role play was canceled because of uh, either a last minute dropout or not enough people signing up to make it happen. If you have any questions about this um, video, 
or wish to talk to um, Joanne or myself, here's our contact points. Joanne, you can contact for enrolment and administration issues. She can also help with theoretical coursework and role plays as well. Or you can talk to myself for the theoretical coursework and role plays. There is our email addresses and our direct mobile numbers. Sometimes we may be in a mediation, being a mentor. So if we don't answer the phone, um, we usually send you a text message back, but try again a bit later. Otherwise, thank you very much for listening and good luck with your studies.